Man Talk Zero Mark on Trans Africa Radio. No, plenty babies, you call it. Plenty yes. babies, Kabo. Plenty babies. Plenty babies, yes. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. We're Thank looking forward to having you. Thank you for having me. I, mean, I love, I love, I love being here. It looks great here, man. Yes, we, we, we've done a few things. We've made it a bit warmer. A uh, lick of paint on the walls. Yeah, <laughs> no, I... I'm thoroughly impressed. It feels really, really amazing to be here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're always welcome here. This is this is home for you. This is home for you. So welcome to the show. Um, thank we've you. been looking forward to, to seeing you for a few things, right? So I've been waxing lyrical to my listeners about how, for me, you're one of the few people who does many things well. I think sure. uh, it is not a, a, a an achievement to say you're a triple threat, you're a quadruple threat, and you do things badly. Yeah, exactly. You right. know, <laughs> and uh, I mean, you. I remember watching you on 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 on, on the show uh, with Ukhani, with uh, Umuzi, the Czech Coast. Yes. Czech Coast yes. and and I remember laughing silly and I was saying earlier on, Wuti, I hated your character, man. My skin used to crawl all the That's time, the like point, this yeah. creepy uncle coming through. And then you and I have a, a mutual friend, obviously, uh, with uh, Solo Zotile Langa. For sure. Um, and I remember going to uh, his album launch and you guys were there. And I just remember going, damn, you know, um, I had seen you around before, but I didn't know there were pipes like that. Come for, on sure, for sure. Um, so for me, it's quite interesting. I mean, before we even get to the whole the conversation about, you know, the, the politics around the art and, 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 and African art. Uh, how do you manage to do so much? And remember, you also uh, lauded, you have a Sama. So yeah. you are not just a Sambudi who says, <laughs> no, I can sing. And then you say, but, you know, has someone else verified? You know, how do you, how do you e- even begin to be uh, uh, so many things? I mean, you, you, you're a writer, uh, you're a fantastic actor, you're a great musician, you're a sure. great producer too. So, you know, this, this, uh, this plethora of stuff that you do, how did you get to be so good at those? I think... Um it's a combination of it's a combination of, of many things. One is that I've never been afraid of of starting small. Yeah. So when I wanted to be a filmmaker, I was very happy to to be carrying cameras and bags for a kid just to be on a set. Yeah. To watch how it's made. When I wanted to be in the business, I, I didn't have a problem with with being uh, Timbi Setter's roadie was carrying her bags and mm. towels, whatever. Um, same thing with acting. I started very small as a uh, playing like literally like a very very small character, but mm. staying on set just to watch people like Sp- like Sputla and Martin design just people that admire yeah um and that's why i i, I thoroughly believe in mentorship yeah that, um if you want to learn you have to learn from the past you know what i mean yeah uh, and you have to be willing to start small yeah and you've been, uh, uh, you know, you've we've performed, I've produced uh, hip-hop artists. And for me, when you speak about mentorship, it's quite interesting because we find that a lot of the hip-hop artists today, they want the glitz and glamour of being a hip-hop artist without having to go through the mentorship. Yes, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, um, I don't think because, because hip-hop is such a, is so much about ego and bravado. Um, there isn't space in its culture to mm. allow somebody to say, I'm willing to be small to learn. As, as soon as you say, I'm willing to be small, you're all, almost already not man enough to belong in the yeah. same space. Everybody's about ego and how better I am than the next person. And that's just how the culture is built. And I mean, if you've ever been to New York, you know, like, did you understand that hip hop being born in New York? New York is a very egotistical, big city, very fast, very quick. Everybody's mm. it's all about. So that sort of like became the nature of how hip hop is. Um, so I, I I wish because everything needs to be contextualized with where it is. Now that hip hop belongs to different parts of the world, there's French hip hop, there's African hip hop, there's Asian hip hop. Now that it belongs to South Africa, I wish we could say, okay, we are uh, we as a people are like this, and we believe in Umalume teaching Umda now. Yeah. You know, so even though New York is all about ego, we want to be about something else mm. uh, because we can take this culture of hip hop and 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 sort of sort of uh, format it based on where we come from. Do we have a sound that is uh, quintessentially South African? I mean, you you see a lot of the the, the artists, and not just in the hip hop genre uh, alone, but across the spectrum, you see people you know who uh, want to hitch that high register, like Whitney Houston, for who sure. say. And uh, I mean, I've always said on the show that there's there's for every for every artist who comes and says, I am myself, I am unique, I yeah. am fusing. There's someone who's doing the exact same thing. It's just that it might be an Argentinian music, for sure, for or, sure. you know, basking there's in, in <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think I think there's, there's something there's something um, different between like being a mimic and being influenced. I think we are all pretty much if you're like a soul artist, you pretty much listen to the same thing that your father was playing at home. So you're influenced by Donny Hathaway, or mm. Marvin Gaye, or Stevie Wonder, or Kefa Semenya, or Fela Kuti. Most of us pretty much 
grew up in homes where our parents were playing the same kind of music. Yeah. So when we sing, uh, that influence comes out. But at some point, there's a in in sort of like you start out sort of singing a uh, Johnny song, but somewhere along the line, there's a unique uniqueness that comes out of it yeah and even though there is that voice that belongs to you you can't you can't deny the influences yeah. that, that comes with it i wanted to ask you a question about beef yeah you know and uh because uh, you've you've had a, a career that's gone quite quite a long way and it continues to to to, to continue for sure you know and, and we love that about you i mean i, I was you know where you're sitting one of uh, the people you feature uh on uh, plenty babies oprah and Tamar was there for sure and uh, we we're chatting about how you know um we 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 have careers that we span and people put a lifespan on them because they realize that they don't have enough material for sure they just you know and so what they do is they do stuff in between they get a bit of beef going on oh, yeah, yeah. you know just to get a bit of color going on and yet you've been able to 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 stay away from all of that you've been true to the music um and sometimes you know we see you on stage and forget you that you're an artist for sure. you, you, you're you recording artists and on the other side we see you in the studio and forget that you act yeah, you know sure. uh, and so without hyping you too much Gabo. <laughs> um do you find that we now also using tricks to start getting away from actually making real music yeah i think i th- I, th- I think so. I think I, and it's for me. It, it's it's very. It's very for people who have no talent. Yeah. And and you you you've seen how it's easy in the music business for for you to be able to make lots of money in this business without talent. Yeah. I mean, if you're willing to create enough beef where every day we're reading about you fighting with somebody yeah. or being mean to somebody on Twitter, then it keeps your name going. Or I mean, I saw a picture of this new lady who's a sensation, the, the Devon lady, uh, where like her whole cake is out. You know what y- I mean? Yes, um, yes. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I interviewed her two days ago. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, it takes things like that yeah. for you to keep. I and mean, that lady makes more money than I do yeah. right now. She probably makes five times more money than I do because people are fascinated by 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 sexuality. People are fascinated by by. Um, by, by violence mm. or by being crude and yeah. people say some really mean things you know um, I think I, I've always said first of all what helped me is that I started late yeah like I started literally in my in my early 30s yeah which is pretty much late because most people started 16, 17, 18 yeah so because I started late and because I spent a whole decade before I recorded learning the ropes I sort of decided I had enough time to decide the kind of artist I want to be yeah. and I was like I want to be the artist who works with his craft who gets celebrated for the music and who gets celebrated for the for the work yeah. um, I don't I even have an issue with an artist who gets celebrated uh, for their clothes more than they get celebrated yes. for their music yeah. not that there's anything wrong but I don't want to be remembered for being violent or for dressing well yeah. or for for beefs or for being half naked and nobody's talking about the content yeah. of my work. Um, uh, so it's, 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 I guess, because I'm from, old, I'm, I'm old school. Um, the working on your craft, making sure that you're the best you can be at what you do has always been important. I mean, I love that you say that you started late because I was going to touch on that uh, a bit later on, but I think let's, let's bring it forward a bit more because, I mean, the idea of, 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 of this, this entertainment industry is that, you know, you come in early and then you sort of get through all the, the messy bits in the beginning and you hit your, your fame yeah, in your 20s sure. and then you ride right the wave, the 30s you know. <laughs> Find a way of balancing it out through. The then you become a producer, yeah, yeah, or you become, sure. you know, uh, something in the background. But um, so th- this idea then of, of getting into the industry, and I think for me your story is quite interesting because you then decided to go into it. It wasn't for sure. it didn't happen to you. You weren't basking outside, or you weren't whistling in your car, <laughs> no. and then you know so Quincy, Quincy Jones, Jones was like, "Hey yeah. man, <laughs> Kaboom, yeah, no. <laughs> let's no, bring it in." It was a decision that yeah. I took. I'm one of the few people who could say they wrote and produced their first album. Yeah. Not many people can say that. You know what I mean? Because I I took my time learning the ropes, learning how to do things, uh, knowing where to go, who to work with. Um, by the time I made my first album, I had already produced other people. You yeah. know what I mean? I had written for other people. So I was pretty confident in my skill as a producer, as a composer, as a mm. songwriter, as an artist, you know? And that's where the summer nomination comes from because yeah, you sure. we, that's from the hard work and also putting the work into it. So, you, I mean, Sorry, to yeah. catch in. you can't, you can't have step this business. Um, and those who try come in and, and leave quickly. If if you try to to find easy ways to enter it or easy ways to or find ways to manipulate it, it will turn around and and and, and kick you in the ass. I think I think you need to be willing to be patient and go through 
the proper steps that, that we all go to to get to get, get to where we are. Yeah, I mean, I love that. Also, you're from you're you're a Davidson boy, for sure. you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're from the East Rand, and for me, it's interesting because um, when you make a conscious decision to get into the music, it also means that you're, you're you're playing the game in a different field. You know, you can't say things happen to me. You have to plan every part of it. For sure. And I think that's where some of the artists lose their footing. For sure. But now let's go a bit bigger. So you've you you've worked in in in, in television, in music, and 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 you've done very well in all of those. Would you say, and even having done projects of your own, where you finance and you are the guy behind the scenes who yeah. went to go look for the money, um, do you find that there is a a a a a place for an artist? You know, Kabum who says, "Right, I'm leaving my job as a doctor today, as a lawyer, as whatever it is. I am now going to get into this career of entertainment, and I want to produce a film. Yeah, I want to start my own uh, uh, label. I want to uh, g- record my first album. Is there a, a, a political appetite with the government, with the, the agencies that are around that want to give money? Because again, you know, I was saying uh, two weeks ago that if we use fashion as an example, if we employed every unemployed person in fashion, there'd be no unemployed people. For sure. In all the spin-offs. So there's music, enough space. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. enough space in yeah. the spin-off, in the secondary market, in the third market, and so is music. For because sure. you need, as you say, roadies, you need, uh, you know, the guy, the gaffers to carry sure. the cord and all those things. I think, I think um, you can't do that if you've done... If you've done your homework mm. once again, if you if you quit your job today, you must know on Monday exactly where you're gonna start. You know what I mean? Uh, can't just jump. Yeah, <laughs> you can. You must you must do your homework. Um, almost as if almost as if like there should be an overlap where before you quit, almost almost have those appointments done, almost have your proposal done, yeah. um, already be speaking to somebody at NAVF, already be speaking to somebody at TTI, yeah. that kind of a thing, you know what I mean? It shouldn't just be like, I'm quitting and I think it's, it's just part of it. Bye-bye, yeah, bye-bye, yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah. Um And I always say to people, for every... Because people will go, but look how it worked for Casper, look how it worked for AKA, look how it worked for... for, for for Zahara or whatever. Yeah. Not realizing that for every AKA there's five thousand very dope, amazing rappers yeah. who are doing everything right. Who've got a PR person, who've got a manager, who've got uh videos, who've got great albums, who just for some whatever reason they don't get picked up. But what is that, that 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 barrier that doesn't get picked up? Because I mean, you know, people in radio, for yeah. instance, you know, you've, you've you you know real physical people who work in the radio space, um, and you've been in the industry long enough for for you to have been able to produce albums for people that for have sure. been played on radio. What is that missing part? What are, what is Kabumu doing to get his music on the radio that the five thousand AKAs aren't doing? I mean, I mean, there's a whole, all kind of things. Whether mm. you, you know the right people, um, the, does your manage, does your label or manager, or today we actually hire people who plug in your your music. Like their jobs is to plug yeah. your your songs on radio because they've got great relationships with music managers. And the music business is really about relationships. Do you know the right people, uh, and are, are they are they available at the right time? And also, you could have the right people and just not have the right product it's almost like it's almost like it's a balancing act you have to have the right team the right timing the right product the right relationships yeah they almost all work at the same time i mean jay-z explains it like you can't even dispute the element of luck yeah he's like i i did everything right but the one thing that made sure that i got it right was luck so that's what i'm saying sometimes you could have everything right yeah have the right relationships have the right song have the right management have the right label and that doing everything right they've placed your song at channel O. the places your song at every radio station and spinning and everywhere and for some reason it just doesn't pick but, up. But some would argue then, Gabo Mugut, it's a money issue because you find people who are like apparently buying album, uh, buying awards, you know, the yeah, allegations sure. were made and the fact that they're piling money into national broadcasters and other stations to get their airplay yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and, you know, so is it, so would it be then whether you've got luck or finance? Well, I mean, a combination of both. There are people, the people who, who, who haven't done it. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, payola is a reality of the of the music business. Yeah, it's been as payola has existed as long as the music business has existed. Yeah, from day one when people started selling music, there was someone paying a radio station, somebody to play the music. So, um, and some people who've just like you, you hear the story of someone saying, "I didn't know anybody. I went and I recorded my song." Uh, at the back room of my house <laughs> and I gave it to my cousin <laughs> and next please, thing please, please, uh, please. yeah and next thing you know it was number one it was a number number one record. Not every not every success story is about is about payola or money or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes I do believe it's whether the song was so good we couldn't resist it. Or um, 
you happen to have the right person at the radio station who liked it enough to yeah. keep playing it often and that's where the like element comes in like yeah. you can't explain why do you think i mean i, I find also uh, especially i mean i respect uh, musicians in particular because sure. you create from nothing yeah so it, it really is you know it could be what you ate for breakfast it could be a book you read anything really, right you create from nothing which for me is very interesting because that means that you have the um, you know the god-given touch to be able to say because you and i could hear the same music you know can hear uh, we can read the same book but i'll be like hey it was a nice song and you go yeah, no, 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 no. move this change this put jabu on this one for sure yeah, on exactly. this and, and, and it work out for me that is what the interesting thing about about the creation part of it for sure um and 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 you guys have then worked it out so well so which leads me to my next question uh, so this double offering that you're giving us yes. right now how we've got uh, uh pop and yeah. uh, we've got uh, house, uh, yeah. house you yeah. know and i mean those are interesting because there's hip-hop hits and there's house hits for sure and they usually don't eat at the same table for sure so why would you then and then bring them out as an offering at the same time as as, as, as the course you know the funny thing about this is about this album is that with my first album and when it came out all things great i sort of almost became like the the picture of new soul because yeah. at the time there wasn't the the way a few new soul artists but it wasn't down in the caliber that that my first album was you yeah. know what i mean when it comes to production and, and lyrical content and yeah. the way we produced it and um i sort of became like um the, the picture of of new soul yeah but in all the albums that i've released which were very soul oriented i'd either like uh, do a small rap verse here or whatever i mean one of my one of my biggest songs to, to Till date is a song called Color of You, yeah. which was my first album, and people like hearing me rap. And then I do like uh, collaborations with house DJs, like uh, at DJ Clock or Gula the Song or Lula Cafe or Revolution, and would always have big hits or Miser would always have big hits doing house songs. So I started developing fan bases. I'm not sure if it's the same people who buy my albums. <laughs> I think I think I think you you've got that crossover appeal yeah, that yeah. people that people wanted, and I think it also comes from the fact that you you insisted on. On, on learning the craft first because for sure you didn't come in and say I want to do it yeah, so, you yeah. so um, because because my friends kept asking me for literally for since my album came out like we want a full on house album and we want a full on hip hop album I was like you know what I'm just going to do both and put out at the same time just because my fans have been asking for it and I made sure that when I do it I do it with the right production team I work with the right collaborators so like I just I just didn't just do it as in like guy it's a fella <laughs> yeah like I went and I collaborated with Reason and Questa and Proverb and, yeah. and Big Star and Zwei when I did the house stuff I went and I worked with with uh, Zion and Zano and Nak Music yes. and Pumi so I didn't just do it I went to the people who understand those spaces very well I said I'm doing this thing and i want you guys to help me make sure that i do it right you know and i think you, you 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 hit the nail on the head by also getting the right people to, to feature on because that in itself is it's, it's, it's a talent for sure you know it also is is being able to put that, that that picture together so i mean then getting into to the music and then the offering is out and uh there's this dual offering and it's, it's very new for sure right you know so it's, it's a few weeks old have the people gravitated to it as you thought they would you know what we we had a plan of trying to push both products as 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 um uh, separate albums even though they're in one product yeah so our, our our marketing plan and PR plan is we sell both products almost like we sell them t- as two albums that came out at the same time okay almost like a schizophrenic thing where you got like that one with the hip hop artist and that one with the house artist and I guess it's a December thing or December man yeah people people like the house song yeah but people love the dance song I think um, so we eventually were like you know what just not lie to ourselves so we, we literally started pushing the hip hop the house album more the house album more so yeah. we did a video for bye bye with danger and professor yeah and we we thought the song with, with quest and reason would be bigger we thought people would gravitate towards that um uh stadium status and people like it and some radio stations are playing it but not at the level that we saw this other bye bye grow like, yeah and for me as a non-dance artist i've never seen i guess because i've never been in the space I didn't realize how quickly, at least in this country, yeah. dance music moves. Like uh, it, it, it's also fascinated me because yeah. I, I, early on, before you came through, and I, mean, I was talking about, you know, for me, um, some of the artists who, who've been sort of big in the year. Yeah, and it is mad that you. I mean, even you were talking about a lady who you know doesn't uh, wear very much from Derby. Yeah, for sure. And um, I was in the award show on Thursday, and um, she performed, and it was a dance song. And I promised you, I looked back. 
and the whole house was standing yeah, up and you I'm can't, like something is in it. Our country loves to dance and you can't you can't you can't take it away from them. Mm. Uh, and and also just like uh, the reality that as a as a soul artist as much as I like it there isn't really a new soul market in this country. No. We've tried it, we've done shows, we've done albums, DVDs, we've done everything right. It's just like the amount the the the, the level in which it takes me to fill up a, a Yamaha. I have yeah. to market it for three months. Before. And yeah, pre-sell, 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 pre-sell. And we're shooting videos and rehearsals. We're literally begging people to come. <laughs> and like, we'll just barely fill it up. And the, the, like literally you put up a tweet and like me and Donald are at this club tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like packed. I'm, so it's like the level is so different. I'm, I'm very interested in, in, in the collaborations that you, you, you chose to have on and we'll talk about them a bit more when we come through. Sure. But I know that you also, you've got uh, one, a track with Barita. Yes. And I heard her for the first time talking about Neo Soul and that, and that kind of sound. And I was floored, man. Yeah, she's amazing. And I was just she's like, amazing. And, I, and, and how I, I, I learned of her is that I went to a, a, a particular car brand was having a off-road thing. Okay. And at the end of it all, um, we, we had performances, you know. And I remember sitting there going, this is so goopy. Exactly. This is so goopy. Uh, but you know, talking about the, the the tracks that we like, I mean, I mean, I know I like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, um So when you when you when you putting together a track, uh, did you know you'd want a danger and a professor on it? Did you know that you know it would have such synergy, or did you go? It looks like it's a, it could work, and with with your knowledge of this game, not even not even how it happened is that um, Professor and I had been friends maybe for a good decade yeah and he he had already said we want we must do a song together and i i never in my head imagined what would happen if uh professor and i would would have i would never put you yeah, guys together in the same room yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't put you guys in the same hotel <laughs> building <laughs> so when i went to the studio to record with them i honestly had no plan yeah um he had organized a studio we went to the Kalao studio he organized a producer uh dj mix he had a song there so i was like okay i'm gonna go there i'm gonna let him yeah. Take charge. When I arrived there, he already wrote the chorus for me. How? Uh, he already, like, melody, he had re- recorded for me, like, and it was kind of like, I want you to record like this. I want you to do this part See, here. And, and, we, and we lose that with, with artists like, oh, Professor, and about Danger, and, yeah, you know, yeah, we, sure. we, think, we think they go in, and then it's just kind of like, you know, enough champagne in the room, and something nah, will happen. Nah, that guy, that guy really, really, really impressed me, and he, he knew harmony, he knew, he knew arrangement. I literally, I did the least job in that, on that album. I literally wrote the verses. He wrote the pre-chorus for me, wrote the chorus for me, did his own ad-libs. We recorded. Um, and then one day, Danger's also a friend of mine. Yeah. And it was um, halfway done. I just played it for in the car for my friends. And he happened to be in the car. And they're like, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's I, hang up. Yeah, I want to jump <laughs> it. I sent it to him. We were going to on the same day. But Monday morning, it was back. He had laid his verses. And it's been just amazing how available they've been. They're both very busy to people. But like, when I want to shoot videos, when I do promos, they, they fly over. Very av- available, very professional. So it's been, it's like, I'm, I almost feel like I'm a child. And this is my first album. Yeah. And I'm learning a whole new world. Because literally, like, this house space is a whole new world. It's new. Yeah. I mean, I was... I was with my wife yesterday. We went to 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 buy like cold drink somewhere, and the guy stopped me in the street. He's like, "Yo, I heard your album yesterday." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> but but also, I, never, I, 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 I had never ever played in the before, and I thought he was kidding. Gave him my number, for me this today. Final deal. I'm going to perform some Shisanyama. So it's like. It's like a whole new world for me. And, right? and, and I think that's what, what, what the, you know, just to re-politicize it before I play it, bye bye, um, is, is, is the fact that you, you, people don't realize that the subcultures of, of hip hop and house, how similar they are in how different they are even for at the sure. same time. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, you go to a Chisanyama and you're there and the music is going. And my gripe with house has always been the fact that it sounds repetitive. For sure. But I've now realized, and this was uh, what I learned from KG Mugetsi, yeah. a friend of ours, is that, um, it's a different it's it's you don't drink whiskey like you drink wine yeah so you must appreciate house when, like it yeah, yeah like when, when you listen to it you can't bring a jazz official yeah. space into it you have to listen to it in a different space i i also was literally taught to appreciate house music yeah. and it's a different element and there is some house music that is incredibly incredibly musical yeah you know what i mean that's more musical than r&b and hip-hop that has arrangement that has harmony whatever and it's like different elements of house music and we try to capture that in the album as well i mean some street, really street gum kind of stuff Gom. and there's some like really melodic some deep some cultural stuff we even did like a, a gospel house song on yes it. so we really went different elements of gospel on it i mean of, of house yeah. to it. but it was and literally i felt like 
um and this is the first project where i allowed myself to be produced so to sit back yeah i was like because was you're, like, you're like a know, doctor yeah, you're like a doctor yeah, yeah. you know how to to lapa yourself you know how to yeah, treat exactly. yourself and now you have to submit to Other someone people else and say i don't know like some, sometimes like i'd want to add like a little improvised and like, you're like i want you want you want <laughs> so let's listen yeah. to Bye Bye. I think uh, after waxing lyrical about it, it would be a shame not to. Bye Bye featuring Danger and Professor with Kabo Mui. It's uh, hashtag Man Talk. Hashtag Man Talk Saturday is at 20 past 7 Central African time. This, this is Trans Africa Radio. You know, I possibly like um, the video to the song equally as much as I like it. As I like the song, really? Yeah, I think there's there's a, there's a lot of magic in seeing a bunch of artists sort of, you know, and it looks like Shona Ferguson who's just like <laughs> nodding his head, like Ingo Miami, Ingo Miami. First of all, how do you get this many people in in, in one room? Because Donald like, was on there. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of people. Solo, uh, Chava. Mm. I literally called them like two hours before and said. Um, because the, the album was pretty much done. Yeah. I think we're just about to promote the second album. And they were just on my ass about how I didn't do a video for this big song. Yeah. So it was almost like... It was almost like... Um, the riot affair. Yeah. So a friend of mine happened to have a camera that day. Uh, and I phoned my band. And I phoned a few people. We literally took about an hour and a half to shoot the whole thing. Uh, but I'm surprised how popular it is. Like everybody loves it. It is. I don't know what it is about it, but yeah. it's one of those songs where you get goosebumps when you're listening to it, right? For sure. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a song that makes you want to fall in love. For us bachelors, <laughs> when when we, when we are hugging our gin bottles at night and we look at the color of you, it is usually a bottle of Bombay. That's the color of it. Um, but I think it's one of my favorite tracks because also it's just um, even with the video, it's authentically you. You know, For it sure. just is, is the people who love you around you. It is what I saw at the launch. That I was telling you For about. Sure. You yeah, know, yeah. it's very very nice. So I I'm in awe, man. I think. Uh, we need to bring you back for like a two-hour special I'm um, happy to do it. because we've got a two oh, whole albums. We've got a hip hop <laughs> sure. and uh, we've got a house to get through. But I, I also appreciate the fact that you are a consummate artist in every one of your fields. I think it's very difficult, as I said to you earlier on, to do these things uh, in their entirety. And I've seen you do each and every one of them and do them very well. Thank so, you so much. Man. I, appreciate uh, I look that. forward. So we can get the album. Uh, we it's know you're not on social media yeah. anymore. What happened? So, <laughs> hey, what was that question? How do people you, you know that already? Like, uh, <laughs> I when when I got my my research pack. <laughs> And they said to me, and I'm like, okay, so what, what, what? Is, <laughs> no, don't even at at anybody. Just uh, <laughs> you know, I've, I I was one of the first people to be on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, like, like maybe ten years ago, I could count them the number of people who were on it. Like it was me and Kaya and Fresh. Like, really, like <laughs> yeah, the guys, really <laughs> ten. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you can imagine, you can imagine, I I spent a whole decade on online. Yeah, and um, I I started I was starting to feel as if. Uh, I'm not living my life anymore. Yeah. Like I was, I'd go to my favorite. Like I, I went to Common's concert the other day. At yeah. Delicious. I've always wanted to see Common. It was a dream of mine to see him. And when I was there, the whole time I was on your phone. Yeah. Doing on this your phone. And doing this, and then the concert was over, and I like I waited 20 years for this moment. And now and I, I spent all of it doing this configuring. And I Tom was never Cook. actually there, yeah. right? So if I was like, no. That's one reason I want to come out of it. Secondly, uh, it just makes it easy for people to just get too familiar with you. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I'm starting to realize that, like, like you start like misbehaving when you're on Twitter. Yeah. And then like the DM and you're talking to people you shouldn't be talking to. And also, you've got the anonymity of the of the screen. You stand yeah, back. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to res- disrespect people. I don't want people to disrespect me. I don't want to disrespect my marriage. I don't want to like. There's so many reasons yeah. why I don't want to be there anymore. And I feel like I, I've done it and it's been fun. Yeah. But now I just want to be in the moment. I mean, we were saying even at home, like we watch TV like this. You yeah. Know? Like I mean, the ass I'm sure is coming that you have to watch with Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Like Sunday TV needs <laughs> yeah. to happen like, with Twitter. Like, yeah. And for me, I just I just want to go back to being in the moment of things. Yeah. Um, I want to start a family. I want to be there when my kids are grow, grow up. Um, I want to go to concerts. I want to experience them when we're eating. I want to actually enjoy the food and enjoy the wine. I don't want to be taking pictures of it. That's you know food I mean? porn. <laughs> food porn. I, I, I just want to be present. Yeah, and I, I felt like I wasn't. Also, like there was a like I'm in mean, the back end story to it is like um, 
um, there was someone was stalking me and they would like literally like now, that's how you know you've made it <laughs> that's how you know you made it <laughs> they were hacking my twitter and they were hacking my email oh, and okay. sending stuff to newspapers uh, so I was like there's so many reasons why I don't actually need this anymore it can be a very toxic area yeah, very, very co- toxic is, area yeah. but where can we get the music where it's, can we it's on Musica it's on everywhere iTunes everywhere Major music stores online, anywhere uh, where you want it, you can find it. And also, kabomu.co.za. Yeah. It is uh, a wonderful story of your life, actually, and it's very user friendly. But I, I just I appreciate that uh, it's a it's a nice place to be. You know, sure. It's a nice pl- website to go to. <laughs> you also get to get snippets of uh, the albums. You can get to hear some of the music um, and also the disco- discography. Discography. <laughs> uh, oh, so it's kabomu.co.za. But go to all good music stores and get the, the, the music over there. Kabomu, thank you so much, man. I'm Thank been, you for I've having been, me. I really Appreciate it. Very blessed to have you in the <laughs> studio. Uh, Tiwa, you have to go do another interview uh, at a lesser known radio station. <laughs> yeah, I can guarantee exactly. you that. Uh, but Already, you know, this has been the highlight of the day. Yeah. I'm just doing the other one because. Yeah, because you know, the day is yeah, yeah, run yeah, anyway. I'm cool <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wanted to do today. I remember Kupile. So to the other station, if you're listening, I remember Kupile. Let's come on. We'll be like in the studio coming through. Right, it's been bro. a wonderful half hour. Um, and of course, uh, we're going to continue. Another favorite song of mine. Uh, this, this, this is Trans Africa Radio.